India has become the fourth nation to safely land a spacecraft on the moon, following the United States, Russia, and China, where few have gone before. India is also the first to land its Chandrayaan craft near the moon's south pole. Scientists believe this unchartered territory could hold vital reserves of frozen water, which can be used as fuel for future missions. Leroy Chow joins me now. He's a former NASA astronaut and former commander of the International Space Station. We're so happy to have you with us. So put this into perspective. How big of a deal is this? Well, this is a pretty big deal. You know, India has been an up-and-coming space power, and they've had a number of successes over the years. They've developed sophisticated rocket engines and rockets. Uh, they're planning to try to put their first astronaut into orbit in the next year or two. And so coming along and actually landing a lander, uh, only the fourth nation to do so on the surface of the moon, soft landing, and the first nation to put a lander down near the south pole, uh, those are pretty big accomplishments. Explain in this answer what a soft landing is, but, but I'll ask the question first, which is Russia tried to make a soft landing on the moon's southern pole, and it didn't go very well. Uh, it, it crashed. Why is that region drawing so much interest right now? Well, the South Pole is uh, drawing interest, the South Pole and the Moon, because uh, there are parts of the South Pole that are never see, that never see the sun. And so the idea is perhaps there is water ice at or near the surface. In fact, it's, uh, the certain measurements have indicated there's a lot of water ice in those regions. And so, as you mentioned briefly in your report, uh, that water ice could be extracted and used to make uh, rocket fuel, you know, by separating the hydrogen and the oxygen. Uh, of course, if you're going to establish a lunar base, uh, that ice could be used for drinking water and the oxygen could also be used for breathing, right? And so there are a lot of resources, there are minerals that are deposited there, we believe. And so uh, for all those reasons, the South Pole is attractive. The United States plans to land humans on the moon in 2025. Um, how, how have our priorities changed since uh, the last time in 1972? Yes, so the U.S. is uh, hoping to land astronauts again. Uh, this would be the first landings, of course, since 1972, as you pointed out. Uh, these are different because uh, the goals are different. The goal's not just to get there as it was in the 60s during the Apollo program, during the space race. The idea was to beat uh, the Soviets to the surface of the moon with astronauts. Uh, having won that this time, we're looking to sustainably go there. That is, we've got an architecture that would allow us to explore or the moon uh, for, you know, a, a a certain or a longer length of time. Uh, so that would involve a small space station called a gateway that would orbit the moon, and it would be a staging area for astronauts to go down to the surface, and also a staging area to possibly go further into space one day to Mars. So uh, we're looking to go explore the moon to stay this time, and that's really the big difference. And explain that to me, Leroy. The, so you would there ever be an instance in which uh, you would set up shop on the actual moon itself as opposed to uh, orbiting around it? Uh, yes. Yeah. So you would go down to the moon. You would have some kind of a habitat there. You wouldn't necessarily have it permanently crewed. That would that means uh, that that is to say there wouldn't necessarily always be humans there. But it would be a research facility. It would be a facility where you could gather samples, uh, things like that, to bring back to the Earth. And so, uh, you know, for the jumping off point of the moon, probably you would have your vehicle that would travel, you know, farther into space, be in orbit around the moon, and use that gateway as a place where astronauts could transfer to that vehicle. So there are a lot of different things being looked at, but the main point is this time we're not just dashing out for a few missions to kind of show that we can do it. Uh, the idea is to actually get some scientific, more scientific data and use it for an operational training base and other things, you know, to get to prepare to go to Mars. I can't wait. Former NASA astronaut Leroy, Leroy Chow, thank you so much. My pleasure, thank you.